For centuries, the story of Europe was a story of the South and the West. It was a narrative shaped by Rome, by Greece, by Charlemagne, a chronicle of Mediterranean brilliance and Frankish empires slowly civilizing a dark continent. The Slavic peoples of the East were often relegated to the foggy margins of this history, entering the stage late as mysterious tribes pushed by invaders. Their sheer size and dominance of Eastern Europe seemed almost accidental. But what if this entire framework was backwards? What if the true demographic engine of Europe wasn't in the Mediterranean, but in the vast forests and steppes of the East? A scientific revolution is quietly dismantling our textbooks. Archaeologists are putting down their trowels, and geneticists are booting up their sequencers. The result is a story more dramatic than any chronicle. Slavic DNA has not just entered history, it has shattered our understanding of it. The past you know is about to be turned inside out. The traditional history, based on fragmented Roman accounts and medieval chronicles, tells a simple tale. Following the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century, a great migration of peoples swept across Europe. Among them were the Slavs, emerging from a presumed homeland somewhere in the marshes of the Pripet River, modern Belarus slash Ukraine. They were depicted as a relatively uniform mass, expanding passively into depopulated lands vacated by Germanic tribes moving south. They were receivers, not drivers of history, a blank slate upon which Byzantine missionaries and Viking traders would later write culture. This narrative made them a consequence of Rome's fall, not a primary force in European shaping. It was a story built on words, not bones, and it was profoundly, almost completely wrong. Ancient DNA, ADNA, has done the impossible. It has located the precise demographic crucible of the Slavic peoples. It was not a single swamp, but a vast interaction zone spanning what is now central Ukraine, southeastern Poland, and western Belarus. Here, in the early medieval period, circa 500 to 700 AD, a specific genetic profile crystallized. It was a blend of earlier populations, descendants of Bronze Age steppe pastoralists, the Yamnya and Cordedware peoples, Iron Age farmers, and local Baltic and Germanic related groups. This genetic synthesis created a distinct, cohesive signature, but the bombshell wasn't just where it formed, but how explosively it spread. Geneticists can measure this expansion not in years, but in generations, by tracking the sudden, overwhelming dominance of this specific Slavic genomic profile across thousands of square miles. Here is the fact that rewrites every map. The Slavic expansion was not a mere cultural shift or a small warrior elite taking over. It was a massive, rapid demographic event, one of the most significant in human history. When geneticists compare DNA from skeletons in regions like modern Germany, Poland, and the Balkans before and after the 6th century AD, they see a genetic turnover of staggering proportions. In parts of Central and Eastern Europe, the pre-existing genetic makeup of the population, often a mix of Germanic, Celtic, and Roman-era lineages, was replaced by 30 to 60 percent with the new Slavic profile within just a few centuries. This was not a peaceful drift. The speed and scale, visible in the DNA, point to a driven population movement. It involved families, farmers, and whole communities moving west into the vacuum left by Rome's collapse and south into the fractured Balkans. They didn't just bring a new language, they brought a new gene pool. The modern populations of Poland, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, and large parts of the Balkans are fundamentally, genetically Slavic because of this singular transformative wave. The shock waves of this genetic tsunami reached shores no historian expected. Let's examine two stunning case studies that obliterate old national myths. One, the Greek mystery solved. For generations, Greek nationalism promoted the idea of direct, unbroken descent from ancient Hellenes. But ADNA from ancient Mycenaean and classical Greek skeletons compared to modern Greeks reveals a seismic shift. 
modern mainland Greeks carry a substantial Slavic genetic component, ranging from 10 to 40 percent, highest in the north. This is the irrefutable genetic fingerprint of the early medieval Slavic settlements described and often minimized in Byzantine texts. The Greek nation is not a pure descendant of Pericles, but a magnificent synthesis of ancient Aegean and later Slavic ancestry. 2. The German East Reborn Modern Eastern Germany, former GDR, has a population genetically distinct from Western Germany. Why? Because for centuries after the Slavic expansion, the lands east of the Elbe River were populated by Slavic tribes like the Sorbs and Valeti. The later medieval trend, Drang nach Osten, drive to the east by Germanic settlers, was not just a political conquest, but another partial genetic replacement layer atop a Slavic base. The DNA of Eastern Germans is thus a palimpsest, a Germanic layer over a deep Slavic substrate, a fact invisible to history but glaringly clear to genetics. This genetic data solves a long-standing linguistic mystery. How did the Slavic language family achieve such remarkable uniformity from Prague to Vladivostok compared to the fragmented Romance or Germanic families? The answer is in the DNA. The extreme genetic bottleneck and rapid expansion from a small core homeland meant the language spread with a genetically cohesive population. There was little time for major dialects to diverge before the continent was settled. The Slavic languages are so similar because the people who spoke them were, until very recently in historical terms, one people. Genetics proves that language, in this case, followed genes with unprecedented fidelity. The implications are continental in scale. The story of Europe is no longer a neat westward progression from Rome. It is a tale of two colossal demographic hearts. The first, in the ancient Mediterranean, gave us philosophy and law. The second, in the early medieval Slavic homeland, gave Europe its demographic mass and eastern shape. The Slavs were not latecomers to Europe, they are one of its fundamental pillars. Their expansion is the single most important process shaping the genetic and therefore the historical landscape of the second half of the first millennium AD. To ignore this genetic truth is to misunderstand the very foundation of the modern continent. The history books are not just being edited, they are being rewritten from the ground up, one genome at a time. If your understanding of history has just been fundamentally altered, you're not alone. Subscribe to the Footcast. We are on the front line of the genetic revolution in history, where DNA is the primary source and the stories it tells are more incredible than any fiction. What other historical dogma should we challenge with data? The origins of the Vikings? The truth about the Anglo-Saxons? Let us know in the comments. Share this video. It's time the new map of the past was seen by everyone.